Hey everyone, back through the magic of video. So we'll go on to maintaining the saw here. Um, it's crucial to safety is having a well-maintained saw. You wanna make sure that your chain brake works before you start cutting. You wanna make sure that this throttle lock works before you start cutting. Um, those are the two main safety features of a chainsaw. If either one of those isn't working, probably go get it fixed, uh, pick something else to do for the day. Those are crucial. Um, it, something I forgot, and I think it goes more with the clothing is, but when I'm gonna go cutting firewood or work in the bush, I make sure I'm packing a first aid kit in my pack. Uh, there's not a lot in here, just uh, ABD pad, a compression bandage, and some um, quick clot, uh, a few little miscellaneous things, some band-aids, etc., etc., in here. But you should keep something like this close just in case. You never know. All right, back to task. Uh, to maintain this a chainsaw, it's all pretty easy. You keep the air filter clean, they're located in here. You just pop this off. Just be careful not to get any. Um, sawdust or anything else down in the carb once you pop this air filter off. Plugs right here. Yeah, they're easy to pop out if you flood your saw by accident or whatever. Dry it off with a lighter and you're good to go. Fuel filters are located in the gas tank. So they're easy to get out with a pair of pliers. I just pack a Leatherman with a couple things, a lighter in here to dry off a spark plug if I need to, this thing to get the fuel filter out, um, tighten up a few other things. I have one of these Leatherman uh, adapt tool adapter thingies. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. These things are pretty handy. Pinch them in the Leatherman there, and you can add a few little bits there. I've got some metric, small metric sockets in there to maintain this. I've got a bunch of um, bits to tighten up all the bolts and screws that are on this saw. Muffler bolts, you should check those a lot. They loosen up and just all of them, these things are, they vibrate a lot. So, you know, everything does come loose eventually. So you got to keep them all tightened down. The Husqvarna's, I find they have a little bit better of a vibration dampening system than the stills, you know, so they're not too bad, but they're not quite as robust as the stills either. So, uh, you know, depends on what you need, I guess. Um, oh, maintaining the saw. So keeping your chain tight, not too tight though. You know, you want, you don't, you can see I've got a hot spot here. Chain got a little tight on me. Um, you you want to keep it tight but not too tight. Also, speaking of tight but not too tight, these bar nuts. So I see guys just cranking on these things. You know, you they've got their bar wrench on here, and they've you know they're putting 200 pounds of pressure on this little these things. There's no need for that. You got to be snug so they don't come loose, but you don't have to crank right on them. If you strip this bolt that goes into the saw there. It's a major pain in the butt. Um, yeah, you just gotta loosen them off a bit. You just turn this little screw right here. It tightens up the chain or loosens the chain, but you tighten it up and snug your bolts back down. Like I say, you don't gotta get too crazy. Just give them a little, little snug. Um, now the next thing in maintaining this saw is sharpening your chain, keeping the sharp chain. If you have a sharp chain, your job's gonna be a lot easier. You're not gonna get as fatigued, and if you're not fatigued, you're better able to concentrate on what's going on in front of you. It's crucial. You you know, conserve your energy, right? Let the saw do the work. Keep this chain sharp. I'm gonna do, I've got another little, I could go on and on about sh different ways to sharpen a saw. Uh, I've got a couple tips. I'll slice in here after, I guess, and um, basically the only things you need to keep your saw sharp are a round file and a flat file. I also like to use a little raker gauge. Um, it just makes it easier and when your rakers are all equal the saw just cuts better so 
yeah, if you can pick one of these up, great. Um, they do make a ton of little gadgets or gadgets, as the crazy Russian hacker likes to say. I love that guy. I was talking about filing your saw, keeping your saw sharp. Um, like I said, there's a ton of little gadgets you can use to sharpen your saw. Some of them work great, some of them not so much. What it comes down to is practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And um, like I say, I have another video, I'll give you a few tips in this video. I don't want to make it too long though, so I'll you know, just keep down to the bare bones basics. Um, and yeah, I think that there's a... That Little tip for filing out in the field. Uh, chances are you're not going to have a vise out there and when you're filing it's best to keep this bar stable so um, you don't want any lateral movement while you're filing. The best way to achieve this is to get right up on the saw. I like to put it on a log or on a round, get my chest right up on it so the power head doesn't move and then I take my hatchet see there stick that in the log or in the round put the bar up against it and then when you're filing your bar doesn't move and you can get a nice even um, file on it so when you're filing remember you want your round file to be parallel to your guideline on the top of the tooth and you want your file to be um, at 90 degrees to the bar so you want this angle here to be 90 degrees. I like to tilt it back just a bit, but yeah, 90 degrees is a good rule of thumb. So you do that, you do the ones, teeth all on the one side there, take your hatchet, on the other side, and you get the idea. All right. Hope that helps. Okay. So on this tooth here, you can see that this angle is a little too steep in comparison to this guideline. This guideline and this angle should be the same. They should be parallel. So and this tooth you can see right here, it's a little bit rounded, it's hit hit something hard and it's taken the edge right off it. Um, so we'll give this a few strokes and see if we can get her back into shape. Okay, sorry about that. It seems to be pretty hard to keep this thing steady when you're filming in so close, but I'll clean that off a little bit for you there. So we gave her a few, a few strokes, but you can see that the tip just right here, it's not quite right, and you can see that this angle right here, it's a little round. We've got it rounded off still. You want that to be straight across. You want it to be parallel with this. It's tough because this is taking a hit on this corner here, and we've got to take off quite a bit of material. So we'll give her a few more strokes, see what we can do here. Okay. That's starting to look a little better. Now, you can see when I file, you should be 90 to this, to the bar with your, with your round file. I put it on a slight down angle, so I'm just cutting into this uh, middle link in the chain just to see here and that seems to put a nice edge on these things. So you can see, got her pretty much parallel with that guideline there, and that tooth is sharp. Now what you wanna do is, every other tooth on the chain, you want it to look just like that. You want the exact same um, surface area on the top of the chain. If one side's a lot bigger than the other, you'll get a lot of um, 
you know, see this one's way bigger. So on this side, that's when you start getting cuts where it's cutting like on the half moon and you really got to start pushing and the saw is just not cutting properly. So we're going to have to take this tooth down even though it doesn't look that bad. It's got a little bit of dark spot there. It's obviously taken a bit of a hit but we got to take a lot of area off this tooth too. Okay, now you can see oh, that off there. You can see that this is really similar now to the other tooth. This line is pretty much parallel with the guide line, and ooh, that edge is really sharp. So keep her coming now. Okay, so. Once you have the tooth filed down to where you want it, you get your line well, pretty close. That's where I like them. I know it's not perfectly parallel to this guideline, but close enough. I don't like as sharp a point on it because when you put a really sharp point on there, if you do end up rocking it, um, this it chips off and then you got to take a super ton of material back sometimes if you don't sharpen it quite as pointy it's a little more rugged not much but a little more anyway so once you've got this cleaned up filed now you want to take your raker down now this is your raker that judge gives you the depth the depth of cut for your tooth so if this is too high your tooth's not going to cut deep enough and you're not going to pull out a lot of wood it's going to cut slowly pull too much and it's hard on the saw and it won't cut great either so it's a fine line and because there's a fine line I use a raker gauge this little 3 8 raker gauge it's got a little setting for hardwood and a setting for softwood which is mostly what we cut around here and obviously I use that one a lot I'm going to do the other one today though so these go on here just like this and you give it a couple strokes I don't know if you can see that but right there that little shiny spot now I'm just taking it down just a bit maybe a millimeter if you go the other one for um, hardwood it won't take anything off but softwood Boom. That's all there is to it.